So the GDM stands for Gateway and Device Management. Right. It's a software gateway. It, it is not a hardware gateway in the conventional sense. Right. That allows you, you to provide a secure interface between your IoT devices uh -huh. and the backend cloud. Yep. We are built on an open API architecture. So what happens is IoT application developers can build applications on our gateway platform. Right. And our focus area is on the industrial IoT. So you have got say big warehouses like these. You have got sensors. You know, internet is choppy in these areas. So what we do is we work with edge gateways where this application is developed at the edge computing. So any machine to machine communication at the local warehouse level happens at that, at that device itself before posting it to the cloud. Right, right. So that's the differentiating factor which we bring in. <laughs> and like I told you, it's built on an open API architecture. We've come up with our own compression engine also. Mm -hmm. That is built on machine learning and neural network. Right. So we are actually solving the IoT paradox problem. What happens is all these devices, they've got low data footprint. Low data Foot footprint. Okay. But the volume is so huge. Yes. The cost of posting all this data to your cloud is super expensive. Yes. So with our real-time compression engine, we try to optimize the uh, the entire cost yep. in real time, and okay. that is the uh, icing on the uh, on the cake. Right. And that differentiates us from the other middleware providers right. with a real time uh, data compression. Okay, so your the data science is around how you optimize the data compression. That's yes. what you use yes. the machine learning for. Yes. Okay. And apart from this, we also support various industrial protocols like MQTT, Zigbee, uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, yes. LoRa. Sigfox, we support various protocols. And another problem which we are solving for the IoT application developers is we are coming up with our own UDDL. So we have come up with our own unified compressed data stream for discrete and disparate data. Right. So this is a standardization language uh -huh. that cleanses the data coming from different devices in different formats and allows you to standardize it. Right. So this also becomes a big activity for IoT application developers. And once this data is cleansed, you know, compression becomes easier. Right. So we come up with our own UDDL, Unified Data Definition Language, that allows you to standardize and normalize any IoT sensor data, any protocol data for your backend cloud. That's that's a big task to yeah. do. Like yeah. data wrangling is a huge Very true. burden. Yeah. Very true. Okay, so you guys take care of that, and is yes. it through a UI? And it's pretty yes. much wow. Yeah. So that's great. what I wanted to show you. Okay. So, so like you know, you've got a lot of. Uh, uh, companies providing gateway so the uh, jo primary job of the gateway is to manage your devices and your you know, connections right but apart from this we provide high end analytics and the UDDL wherein right. you can define your own definition data definition language so that it becomes easier for you to normalize the data right so these are two additional features which we work effectively right. okay yeah. okay so do you want to um, show me a demo so I'll, I'll just, just um, point at the laptop yeah, yeah. So this is the interface which is deployed uh, uh, on a gateway, a hardware gateway, which is for the field aggregator. So I've got different options, you know, I can set up my sync options. You know, where do I actually integrate with? Where does my data have to go? Does it go to AWS, Azure, or my private cloud itself? Okay. And it could be, you know, a REST-based protocol. So I can support different protocols for the cloud. So you can use any cloud you like, it yes. doesn't have to be... So it is, a, like I said, you know, we just hand, it, hand the software to the users mm -hmm. and they can configure it to any, any cloud at the backend. Right. Okay. Any, you know, uh, REST protocol, they can initiate any machine-to-machine -machine communication at the backend. Got it. Similarly, we've got the device management, wherein I can create and manage different devices mm -hmm. and different protocols also for these devices. Oh, cool. And then the cool feature which I mentioned to you, the local analytics. So instead of all these sensors going to the cloud and then asking what needs to be done, right. we initiate some level of analytics at the local level itself, local hardware, which yes, might be yes. a dumb you know, Raspberry Pi. Yep. I can initiate some high-end quick analytics. Okay, if the temperature sensor has gone down, should I communicate to the AC, air, co air con, to just switch it on? Yeah. Instead of asking the cloud, you know, what do I do? And the cloud saying, okay, now you switch on the air con. Yeah. Can I bring that uh, element of computing to the field level itself? Yeah. Which we call fog computing. Yes. One level below, you know, below cloud computing called fog computing. Yes. So that's where we are actually working. In. And that's um, and that helps to with security as well, doesn't it? Yes. So very it's true. more secure and um, it diminishes latency. Correct. So very true. It's got a lot of Perfect. benefits. Okay. Awesome. And then we've got the throughput management, which is 
a complete compression engine. Mm -hmm. So I can manage my uh, entire throughput. So, so what happens is different devices have different latencies. Mm -hmm. And not every device I need real-time data. Right. So with this compression engine and my machine learning, the throughput of the devices could be easily managed. Right. And that's where the performance I improves. And my cost of pushing the data to the cloud reduces. Makes sense. Great. So, um, how long have you guys been around? And yeah, that's a very good question. So, we are around nine months old. We're based out of New York. And we've done around five implementations so far. So, some of the implementations which we've done is for the, some of the meter management. Right. Okay. So, we're working with the biggest meter manufacturing company in the world. Oh, that's exciting. Wherein, you know, they've integrated Zigbee, uh, Zigbee chips in there. Mm -hmm. So, collecting this data from your, you know, meter where, where internet connectivity is not there. Using Zigbee, we capture this data in yeah. your gateway, aggregate it, do yeah. local analytics, and post it to the cloud. Nice. So okay. That is one use case. Uh, so this is something that's already live, yeah? Yes. Oh, right. Another is for the dairy farms. Okay. Yeah. So typically, you know, uh, uh, all the dairy farms they are using uh, legacy mach machines. Yes. That even using pedometers to capture the movement of the cows and the cattle. Yeah. You know, when uh, would they be? When there is a potential of a mating season, you know, they have got a mo monthly cycles. Mm -hmm. We're trying to track this automated, and uh, then so they can provide better facilities to the cattle. Awesome. Yep. And then we have got. And then finally, we have got the smart building management. Yeah. So in your buildings, you know, you've got this uh, power management becomes a very challenging uh, affair. Mm -hmm. And you've got legacy protocols being used. You know, they have been using protocols like OPC and SNMP right. for yeah. their UPS power management. So this gateway not only supports the new age protocols, but also the old age protocols, wherein I can initiate real time actions. Oh, brilliant. So these are some of, you know, four use cases which we have implemented across the world. Oh, nice. And um, if people want to get a hold of you, what, yeah. what would they have to do? So all they have to do is go to binjit.com. All yep. the contact details are as follows. Ah, oh, brilliant. You've made it so much easier for me. Okay, so IOT at winget.com. Yep. And uh, do you have a Twitter handle as well? Yeah, so it's Winget Tech. Winget Tech? Yeah. Okay, got it. All right, uh, thank you so much. Thank you.